often we find ourselves faced by challenges that are bigger than we are. And the person that says, God won't give you anything bigger than you can handle, is wrong. The scripture doesn't say that. It says that he would make a way of this gate that you'd be able to bear it. In other words, there's no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. God is faithful. We will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you'd be able to bear it. If you read it in the scriptures and you find each part fits together, when you take it out of context, then you start to say that God doesn't give you anything bigger than you can handle. No, he will. Because whenever there's something greater than you are, whenever there's something that's bigger than you are, then you automatically turn to someone bigger than you are to handle something that's bigger than you are. It's just pure logic. And so, if you went with the idea that God won't give you anything bigger than you are, then it puts the onus or it puts the responsibility on you. But the scripture tells you to turn to him and he will show you the way to escape it. So, I see lots of times in the reality of where people's lives are, in some ways, reflects how well they pay attention to what they're reading or what they think they know because they heard it from church as opposed to reading it and understanding exactly what it says in context. And so always be careful what you hear, what you see, and what you understand because in reality that's going to determine a lot of whether you panic in the days to come or whether you praise what God is doing in the name of his Son. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. It's not us, by the Holy Spirit, giving us authority and telling us to go do our thing, but it's we being made conformable into his image that we should turn our lives over to him and ask him to work through us to accomplish his glory and not our own. As you therefore have received Jesus Christ, the Lord, so walk you in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. When you are in Jesus, not when you are looking at Jesus or saying in Jesus name, then you are having a personal relationship with him. and. A lot of times people seem to somehow glaze over that part as though a personal relationship is to say, uh, God, you know, lead us not to temptation, I go to read on and they run off. But a relationship is like falling in love with someone. You really want to spend time with them. I mean, Jesus is so cool, why would you not want to? I mean, he is in me and he is in you and the degree with which people can see that is how much you allow him to be in control of your life or you take control for yourself and you personify and bury him deep inside so that it's no longer Christ that liveth in you but you that liveth more so than he does. For the life that I now live in the flesh I live by the will of the Son of God who died for me and gave himself for me so that Jesus lives in us. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. That new creation is a type of, if you want to call it that, spiritual possession. You become born again and then the Holy Spirit possesses you. He takes control of you. He says, you're mine. Now let me put Jesus in you and let him reveal himself. Because if you have one, you got the Father and you got the Son too. If you got the Son and the Father, then you got the Spirit. If you got the Spirit, you got the other. Anyways, that's what God said. Isn't that cool? Three for the price of one. Done in the name of the sun. <laughs> we could keep going. Let's wrap. Trees of righteousness of which you are, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. 
Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom, in whom, all the building fitly framed together grows unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also builded together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. God causes in him you to become a temple of the Holy Spirit. You aren't automatically one. You become one as you are framed and structured and coordinated and cleansed and brought about to become a holy habitation for the Spirit of God. And that Spirit of God unifies us with other believers. God separates us from other Christians. We're going to have to figure that one out soon because God, when he takes his bride home, hey, you know, if you got issues, dude, he might not take you. <laughs> you may want to go solve them issues before he come back and take every rest of us all the way home. But the fact of the matter is that if you have love in your heart and you are extending grace and mercy to others, then you do love the brethren, though you may not agree with some of what they believe in or some of what they do. You still love them, and God will see you through to the accomplishment of his faith in you, to be like and made like unto his son. I commend you to God, and boy do I, <laughs> and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. And if you are sanctified, you're set apart for a purpose. And if you're set apart for a purpose, then you are meant to accomplish a design that he has for you. If you're meant to accomplish a design he has for you, then you need to find out from the designer what his purpose is for you to do. So you do do something instead of making doo-doo. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus, unto the glory and the praise of God. Fight the good fight of faith, yes, but in nothing be terrified by your adversaries. So render unto every man according to his works. As God does, he renders to us. Other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus. If any man's work abide, which he has built there on, he shall receive a reward. And if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. So you see, getting worked up, getting caught up, getting mindful of someone else's ministry or actions that they're doing that is wrong, is failure. Jesus himself will cause those works to be tried as by fire. He is the one the person is serving, not you and I. Commit them to the Lord, and if you disagree with them, walk away from them. God, believe me, will reward them according to their works. And trust me, I have seen works of unrighteousness rewarded in this life to the person who has done wrong to the body of believers, as well as to individual people, as well as to sinners. I have seen pastors and prophets and teachers and elders and deacons and evangelists and even people on television say all manner of things, you know, and do all kinds of weirdo stuff that was wrong. And yet you watch and you pray for them and eventually God brings something into their life that reveals what was wrong. And as that happens, you kind of see the real character of their life come out. And it doesn't matter who it is. For me personally, if you ask me, you could you could make a list of your top ten people you think are so off. And I could say, yep. And I've got an example of how God challenged them in some way that they're still going, maybe. But even if they're going, they've already received a reward. God's going to bless them or God's going to challenge them, or God's going to test their works. But if they are saved, it's between him and Jesus, not you and I, to determine who is saved and who's not. So you see, we all stand before one master, one person we give an accounting for. I don't account to you for what I do. You don't account to me for what you do in the Lord. 
but God himself, Jesus, will cause us to give an accounting for all that we have done, for good and for bad. And I do have some things that are bad, and I have hopefully lots of things that are good. It doesn't work like a skill. He just tests them all. And I just say, praise the Lord, God. You know, I'm here, I'm happy. Burn him up. <laughs> Burn out the dross. Cause me to be again. Come forth as gold. Burn out the alms, and not thy right hand know, or not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. That thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Did you know that 90% of tithing that people do in churches get nothing back? Seriously. Those people that are giving all this money, that are getting to write it off on their taxes, that are giving receipts and are receiving receipts, get absolutely nothing back. They have received a reward in this life already. It's done. It's over with. God says, huh, I don't owe you nothing. <laughs> uh -uh. Don't count that as works. Because you see, Jesus is the one who's saying, I'm going to judge your works. Did you do it the way I said? Or did you go back to the law? And you wanted to be seen of men. And you wanted to be rewarded of men. And you wanted to have your reward now. Because if you do, cool. This is how you do it. And we have the law to designate and to tell you how to do it. Go ahead. Put your tithing in. See if God doesn't open up the heavens. If he blesses you. And so he does. He blesses you now and you receive nothing in the kingdom of God for eternity because you've received your reward. You've obviously tested it and seen it was true, so you proved it. But did you do after that what Jesus said? Tithe in secret. Give your offerings in secret. Let not your right hand know what your left hand's doing. Then you'll receive reward in heaven and on earth. Sorry. It's one of those things that, you know what, I hate to tell you and burst your bubble, but most of those people that think they got no trouble because they got mansions waiting for them in the sky <laughs> are in for a big surprise. All we had to do was do what Jesus said, and it was simple. It's when we took it and made it into man's religious ways as opposed to God speaking to us and telling us what to do today that it became a problem. So it's good. I'm glad they are blessed. And people that do that are blessed. Don't get me wrong. They're blessed right now. It will happen to you too. Take tithing. Lay it out before the Lord. Give it to you know the church. Get your receipt. Invest it. Whatever you want to do with it. But pardon me if anybody can see it. <laughs> you got your reward. That's just the way it is. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckons with them. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Lord, thou wilt ordain peace for us, for thou hast wrought all our works in us. So you see, there's a kind of this religious idea out there that a lot of people get upset about and they get all worked up about and they think that you know, Christians are big hypocrites, and some of them are. And they think that God is impotent because the Christians act like it, and they make a good case. And they think that, you know, there can't be a God because if there was a God, then the Christians would trust God more than picking up arms and guns and figuring it out for themselves. Well, they have a case about that too. As a matter of fact, People could make a pretty strong case about the way that Christians live to prove there is no God and that it is phony because the Christians don't act like God is alive. Or do they? You see, the ones that are seen in the world lots of times aren't necessarily the ones that God is blessed with being personal and real as you and I know it. Or maybe you are one of those that want to be seen of men that are way over the top and you show forth all that you're doing well i kind of got news for you the works that god does are in us and not about us 
It's kind of like bearing fruit. How much peace you got, how much love you got, how much joy you got. <laughs> I think is going to be the determining factor. I think maybe when you stand before Jesus, he ain't going to look at what you did for him. Miracles, Lord, we did this in your name. We cast out demons. We raised the sick, raised the dead, healed them, did all this wonderful stuff by faith in you and in your name. Jesus will say, uh, eh. I don't know you. But the ones that come loving and joyful and peaceful and say, Wow, what a ride, Lord. It was great. Man, we were doing all kinds of stuff in your name, but you know what? It's more important now to see you here before us, face to face. Oh, God, burn out the dross. Let me be silver. Let's enjoy this time. And God will say, come, blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you.